the evening of November 22, 1977 was a fateful one for prominent political couple Robert Van Schwakwijk Smith and wife, Jean Cora. Robert and Jean were shot and stabbed to death at their home that night but at different points in time. She was the first victim as she waited for husband to return home from work, and the same brutal end awaited him when he later arrived and opened the front door of the house. 42 years later, the murder has never been solved and questions continue to swirl. Liza, the Smith's daughter, who was only 13 years old at the time of her parents' death, has written a kind of memoir, truth-seeking book, I am Liza Smith that names a number of suspects even strong ones but no one was ever definitively tied to the murder and no arrests were ever made, making it one of Africa's greatest unsolved murders. Robert Smith was a member of South Africa's National Party NP, an Afrikaner party that existed from 1914 to 1997. Afrikaners are descended from South African Dutch settlers of the 17th and 18th century. The NP promoted Afrikaner economic interests and the severance of South Africa's ties to the United Kingdom. Rising to prominence in 1948, the party was responsible for enforcing the vicious policy of racial segregation, apartheid, which gave rise to one of the greatest resistance movements of all time. Robert Smith was a privileged Rhodes Scholar who attended Pembroke College, Oxford, and Stellenbosch University, where his thesis was South Africa and International Trade Politics. Liza Smith states in her book that her father felt it was wrong that people of color did not have the right to vote. Apart from that, Liza doesn't appear to further characterize how her father felt about apartheid as a system of oppression. From 1971 to 1975, Robert was South Africa's ambassador to the IMF and the Smith family lived in Washington, D.C. Jean Cora, who didn't like the court part of her name, married Robert in 1958 while he was at Axford. Liza relates that her mother Jean was a rock and an anchor for Robert, often spurring him on and encouraging him when he needed fortitude. By all accounts, she was a devoted wife and mother who played their major role in bringing up her two children Liza and Robert Jr. She enjoyed painting and pottery. Robert Smith was running for national party candidate in the Springs constituency. Elections were to be held on November 30, 1977. Robert and Liza had rented a house in Springs, while their children stayed home in Pretoria, South Africa's capital. On November 22, a Tuesday, Robert was at his Springs election offices. Jean was out during the afternoon, but the Smith's driver, Daniel, took her back home around 6.10 p.m. Daniel testified later that he had left Mrs. Smith at 6.50 p.m. At either 7.14 or 7.40, accounts differed, Robert's office assistant, Sari got a phone call from Jean asking if Mr. Smith was still there. He was, and Jean told Surrey to convey the message to Mr. Smith that his guests are waiting for him. It appears that Robert had made arrangements to speak to some anti-national party voters at his home. It seems clear that as Jean hung up, she turned to find a gun pointed at her head, and defensively raised her left hand seconds before the first shot. She was found slumped over the phone and autopsy showed she had been shot in the head, hand, and back. Additionally she was stabbed 14 times post-mortem with a stiletto knife. The murder demonstrated overkill, that is more violence than absolutely necessary to affect the victim's death, indicating perhaps underlying personal feelings of rage on the murderer's part. Jean appeared to have been killed 30 minutes to 3 hours before Robert came home. As he entered the lobby, the killers fired one shot, which glanced off Robert's neck and lodged in the wall, a second one to the chest at close range, and one to the back of the head. Lastly, he was stabbed in the back once, apparently with the same stiletto. Two different types of guns were used, according to the police, suggesting two assailants, at least. The Smith's bodies were not discovered until early the following morning when Daniel the driver came in for work. 
spray painted on the kitchen wall and cabinets where the strange words wrote M. A political motive has long been thought the most likely in the Smith murders. The scrawled words wrote M turned out to be Afrikaans for a specialist subunit of the notorious intelligence agency Bureau of State Security, BOSS, and many thought it was its murderous commander, Hendrik van den Berg, also called the tall assassin, who ordered the hit. However, that's questionable, because not only was the spray painting not a typical mo of a boss assassination, the can of paint used actually belonged to the Smiths. It was already there in the kitchen when the murder took place and was therefore unlikely to have been part of the plan. Liza Smith points out that at the time her parents were assassinated, the political atmosphere in South Africa was fraught. The information scandal broke around that time, costing the jobs of the Prime Minister and a couple of his cabinet members. The scheme deflected funds from the defense budget to a number of pro-apartheid propaganda campaigns. Robert Smith might have had detailed detrimental information that he intended to expose after his putative election a threat that would have been too dangerous for the implicated persons to let stand. Other conspiracy theories, too detailed to go into here, included Israel, nuclear secrets, Cuba, and a member of the security police called Roy Allen. During this period, South Africa was in political turmoil. The inquest into the death of Steve Biko had begun on November 14, and a black high school student Saifo Malaza had died in police custody, the 21st in some 20 months, and embargoes against South Africa were beginning to mount. Against this backdrop, it's easy to see how all kinds of people in various political camps could have ended up dead. I find the absence of the mention of the bloody apartheid era in Liza Smith's account striking a dot, but it may reflect of how sheltered, privileged, and possibly oblivious, her life was. However, Liza Smith recounts a story that is perhaps revelatory of the kinds of sensitivities, or lack thereof, during that era. Two days after the killings, she and her brother were brought to the Springs home presumably by the police question mark and shown the scene of the crime. The bodies had been removed, but the spattered, dried, and clotted blood was still there in all its gruesome glory. The policeman at the scene explained to Liza, remember she was only 13, here is where your father was shot, here is where he fell, and here are the marks where he was dragged down the passage. I can think of a lot of cruel and unusual things, and this one takes its position high on the list.